Hey YouTube, in this video, let's talk about shading. This drawing was submitted onto our Realistic Drawing group on Facebook with the reference photo, which all of our uh, group members always upload the reference photo along with the drawing. And uh, there's a request for suggestions, critiques, and so forth, and that's what we're going to do right here. Um, what I want to draw your attention to here is, first off, we always, we always want to look at what is good about a drawing. And this person here, this artist, this, is Rod, or is Rald, I'm, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correct, um, has a very good eye for feature, uh, the facial features and so forth. And it, this is a very, very good drawing. I mean, this it is really, really good, and it shows that this person has talent. Now, the whole goal within the group is to make a drawing become more realistic, more like the original. And so that's what we're going to talk about here is how we can bring this out a little closer to this right here. So we want to take it from looking like a drawing more to looking photoish or real. One of the biggest things that people or artists have trouble with is hair. And a lot of times with hair it is drawn like spaghetti. There's just all these different lines. As you can see here, you have just lines, 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 lines. And it gets to where uh, it, it doesn't look as much like hair than it does look like someone's wearing a mop or something on their head. And the hard lines, like these locks and stuff, you can see that they're outlined. If I can zoom in here, you can see, you see these hard lines coming in here drawing shape. Well, hair does not have that kind of a look. It doesn't have these very hard lines in here. And you want to avoid these hard lines. You can see hard lines here. You have these hard lines in the hand, which takes away from the realism. Hard lines for all the details on the eye here needs to be softer. Around the nose, you have this hard line and this hard line. You have to learn to feather it out somewhat. Use a change of tone from light to dark, dark to light, rather than just drawing in a line. You need to avoid these, these lines that you see here. The mouth in the lips themselves could be very, very harsh. They need to be softened up. So let's address each of these independently, for example. Like, we just took a look at the nose. So let me get into the nose real quick here. Okay, so we see that we have this really, really hard line here. This hard line here and here. It's like an outline. But if you come in here, you don't see this hard line. The hardest you see is here, and even that is feathered out compared to here, which is really focused in. This one is more like it's out of focus, and you can see that there's slight feathering out. And this is what you want to accomplish. So th th this is printer paper, by the way, so I really can't do much changes on here. What you want to do is you just want to come in here and just you want to feather that out. It needs to blend into the next area there as opposed to being a hard line. You're looking at lighting here, shades, shadows, and so forth. And that is what you want to accomplish. Now they got shading up here. I'm going to see if I can get that in here with this 9XXB pencil and and printer paper, laser paper, so 
may be hard to defuse. See, that line is so hard in there that it would be very difficult for me to get it out. But I'm going to try, just, just for giggles. You can see all this shadow area here. You want to get that shadow area in there. You don't want to leave that out. That's all part of photo realism is get that shadow in there because it's if it's in the original it needs to be in the drawing itself okay see that a very harsh line there's no way I can cover that so I'm not going to try to cover it because I can't it's too harsh but I want to get this shading in here just so you can see what needs to be done, for example. This is all not in the light, so you got to get that all that lightness out of there. And don't be afraid to go dark. And here how it's so sharp, you want to kind of fuzz that out a little bit. You don't want it that dark. And then there's a little bit of blending that goes on here. I'm just going to be real light with my pencil here. This line should not be here. As you can see right there, it should not be there. What you want to do is you just want to give it a slight hint by a change of tone. Everything's a change of tone. That's the important thing. Now you go from this dark area here underneath the nose and as you go to the part that's lighter you just simply lighten your pencil stroke here and then you can use a blender any one of your blenders paper blender q-tip whatever and you blend out okay now let me go get me something I could blend with here not that it's going to make all that much difference on this printed paper And it doesn't make a lot of difference on this paper. I'd like to do it anyway, because I'm just that kind of guy. Okay, let's take a little break here real quick. I want to show you this side by side. Now on the left is the original drawing. And on the right, I take, I've taken some liberties here and did a little bit of shading around the cheek, darkening around where the hairline is to the face uh, around the chin and so forth and I also uh, did a little bit of uh, shading for the nose which is currently what I'm demonstrating uh, at this moment in the video and that's why I decided to break right here because I wanted you to see about how far I was able to push it uh, unfortunately there are certain dark lines that I'm unable to erase because it's printed in the printer paper I don't have the original drawing and uh, it's very difficult to you know make something realistic when you don't have full control of the drawing in, in this case I, I I can't take highlights out I can't correct shapes or anything like that so I did the best I could but I think this should demonstrate that uh, even though I did not push this to realism because I'm unable to do that with the medium that I have available that you can still see a mark improvement in the uh, realism effect by uh, you know knowing how to shade from dark to light and so forth and minimizing lines it, you should eliminate lines altogether but in this case I minimize them as much as I could by blending them into the neighboring areas so uh, I hope this is uh, uh, helps out and encourages you motivates you uh, especially to keep watching the rest of this video Okay, so you want to get in there, avoid these dark lines, and just make sure that you are going from dark to light to dark, and that shows the demarcations on the drawing. But unfortunately, I won't be able to make substantial change on this because it is just printer paper. And this is a printout as opposed to a drawing, an actual pencil drawing. I'm not drawing on top of pencil here, I'm drawing on inkjet 
ink. But I think I got my point across there. You need to get in there and get that shading done and you want to avoid the dark lines if you want to get uh, if you want to get realistic with your drawings. Now look at the lips. Take a look at let me zoom in here as close as I can. Okay if you look closely there's no line here. There's no line here. And down here you go from light to a little darker to even darker and then you go lighter and that makes this shadow effect under here but if you come over here we have a line you see that line okay you do not want to draw that line you just simply want to bring your shading all the way up to where it is that it needs to go and just if it has to show roundness then you're going to go dark and then into the light you go lighter and then darker. But the top lip is usually darker than the bottom lip so you can pretty much hear most of it's going to be the same tone. You're just going to lighten it up a little bit. But here you can see it's very very light on the top, very light. Then it's super dark on the bottom and then it's got a line. And that is not what you see here. Okay, You see dark then you see just barely lighter and that's it. And so here we should be going like from dark to just not as dark. So bring that all the way up into the light but lighten the shading a little bit and blend it out and all that other good stuff. Get that highlight out of there. There's no highlight in the photo. So if there's no highlight in the photo don't put highlights in your drawing. You will destroy the realism if you inject your own and you're not correct in what you're injecting. So I'm going to try to bleed that line out if possible. Though as I've already demonstrated with the nose it's probably not going to be possible but I just want you to get an idea of of what you need to achieve here. Alright. So Unfortunately, due to the, limita the limitations of doing this on um, printer paper, um, I don't have the original drawing here, but just trying to get that line out of there, it comes in so dark, and I can't use an eraser on it, that won't work. So, But anyway, I think I pretty much got the line out, well, except for here, but now I'm going to get really, really dark. Just trying to get that line out of there. And I'm going to have to go a lot darker down in here. Now, the bottom lip, if you'll notice here, okay, you don't have harsh lines. What you have is you, you have the overall shade of the mouth, and then you come in here and you pull the highlights out with your eraser here, 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 so forth. And then you leave this area here exposed and you can go in a little bit but then you have to blend or, or lighten as you go out because you're making something that goes down a groove and back up again not just some creased line. You don't want lines like this it's just really harsh. So this is for one this has to be really really uh, softened up. You got the center here and then you come out with a lighter tone on both sides. Then you go down into the crevice again and you come out. So it's really really harsh. You got to tone this down a lot here. Anyway, there's only so much I can do here. This is very harsh, very harsh down here. And if you look at this, you go from the dark shadow, but notice you go into a, a mid-tone 
then the light, instead of going straight from dark to light, see there's no mid-tone. So from here, you're going to want to lighten up a little bit. into the light. Okay, take another break here as we're discussing the mouth shadow underneath the bottom lip. Uh, on the left is the original, as you probably know, and on the right is where I've gone in and darkened a lot of the shadow areas, uh, and especially the one we're talking about here, and that is underneath the bottom lip. Now, I've also done the lips here. I've darkened them up. Uh, like I mentioned, the upper lip should be darkened. The bottom lip was darkened, and then I pulled out uh, the highlights. So it really subdues those creases, uh, which were put in there pretty dark, and I can't really lighten those up. And uh, I also just kind of toned down the really white teeth and implied that there was actually a couple of teeth in the back in the darkness. You can just barely see it, whereas in the drawing it's not there. But in the photo, uh, it is there. So I, I use my eraser and try to brute force that to come out. So you can see around the chin uh, where I've darkened and given it that round, pointed, more pointed chin look uh, to go with the photo. But the, the point here for the interjection is below the lip. Notice how you don't have just this dark line but that you go from the dark area and then you start to go out into the lighter area. This gives a much more natural look and is also representative of the reference photo. So you don't have such a harsh line underneath the mouth, okay? Teeth are always a lot of fun. Now you notice the teeth here are super white. She uses that very special toothpaste that makes everything super white. But teeth are not that white. You need to tone the teeth down a little bit. Just a little. And then if you want to bring out the little sparkles or the little white areas, then you take your eraser and you can pull those, those areas out. But you don't want you don't want your teeth to be super white and you don't want the white of the eyes to be super white. It's not white. The eyes, the white of the eyes are not white in real life. You definitely want to uh, tone that down, but this one here is going to be requiring a light hand and you'll darken in the areas where it darkens to give the impression that the eyeball is round. So you'll have an area here that'll be darker and then you'll have this area here that will be darker and then it will lighten up as you go this way. And um, it's definitely darker in here. So you'll want to get that in there and then it's definitely darker in this area. It's more shadowish here. This whole area with the eyes needs to be toned down. It's too bright. You don't have that much light in this area here. So you want to bring that down. This is all shadowed right here. Okay, none of this should be... Let me show you the actual eye. See that right there? That's all shadow right there. Look at that. All shadow. And you need that here. Okay, you want to get this all in here, darken this whole area here. This is all darker in here in the photo. So you got to get that in there. Let's see if I can get this in here. Okay, this is all dark right here. And let me show you, see that? All that's dark. You want to get that in there. So. Let's just, I'll just mark where it needs to be. Now the eyebrows itself, I want you to see this, okay? If you take a look at the eyebrows, you see all that, like you can see the hairs, you see all this white area in here. See the white, all the white? 
See the white areas? Now look at the photo. You don't see any of that. Nothing. It's all midtones and darks in here. So you want to mimic that. Get in there and get your midtones in and get rid of that white because that is not what's in the photo. So just get in there and get that white out of there. Should be no white. Now let's get back to the hair. Okay, as you can see here with the hair, okay, you have a lot of lines, lines, lots of lines. Okay, and hair is a lot of different shades, a lot of different shades going on. What I want you to do is you'll see the darkest areas here. Okay, if you come in with your base, like for example, you put in a base of of a, a charcoal, like you just blend the whole thing with charcoal. Uh, then you come in with your dark pencil and you mark the areas here that are dark. Okay, but you go really light with a lifted stroke in this area right here where it's lighter. Okay, then you can come in with your eraser and start lifting out some of these highlights. You will get a much better hair than just drawing lines. We're missing the shades that we really need here. See, we're missing this, this highlights that we need here. We're missing the dark tones that we should have here. Not only that, but if you look, the away from the light, see how dark it is right here? And then it gets lighter here, and then lighter here, and then it starts to get darker here. Well, this is all the same all the way across. So you have to avoid that. So you're going to want to come in here, and you're going to want to make sure that back here is dark. And there's no highlights up here. But see that? No highlights, and yet you have highlights here. This is adding in your own, like what your brain's telling you to do, rather than doing what you see on the photo. Draw what you see if you want to go for realism. Don't inject unless you're avoiding something that doesn't look natural. Sometimes shadows might make a drawing look unnatural or like there's an extra arm or an eyeball or something you know of course I'm exaggerating but in those situations yes you you'd probably omit you'll you'll leave it out rather than adding things to your drawing okay now I'm not gonna go in here and change this hair out because this is just gonna be a whole lot of work for something I'm gonna throw away but the point I'm making here is you've got to Go in there and make this dark because that's that's what that is there, and then you're gonna you're gonna be lighter here. But let me show you the proper way of, or one way I should say I shouldn't say proper because that's pretty presumptuous. Um, and I'm definitely not the last authority on hair. It took me forever to even get it down. But here's the thing: when you're doing hair dark hair specifically, what I like to do is I'll come in with some powdered charcoal or uh, graphite and you're going to lay that powder down. That's your base. Then you're going to come in and let's say you've got a dark pencil and you're going you're gonna to do these strokes real close to each other but the thing is is that as you go into the lighted area here you just want to kind of lift your pencil up and that way you don't have um, all these, um, you won't be darkening that area, okay? And you won't have all these lines in here, okay? And then from the other end, you can do the same thing because you're going dark, light, dark. So from the bottom here, okay, you're going to come in and you're going to just lift your pencil up as you're going into the light area. Try to get your strokes as close together as possible. If you have to go back over, go back over. Okay. But if you'll notice that as you get to the center, you're not you're not drawing in there. See. Then when you blend, and you do this with your blender, not your finger. Okay. You get this sort of effect. 
and you're avoiding lines, then you're going to take your eraser. Now I'm going to just use this kneaded eraser with a sharp wedge on it, but normally I would use like a Tombow or something. And you're going to come in here and just kind of go like this in the highlight area just to bring out those highlights in the center there. And then you can do it, go over it again and from the other way and so forth. With an occasional line goes through and most of them just lifts up at that point. Blend. Repeat whatever until you get that nice texture that you're looking for. And of course I'm going to go darker way up here because it's away from the light. And then it's going to get lighter as I get further down here. And then this part here is going to be darker away from the light. But it's going to get lighter as it goes up here. your highlights with your eraser. Let's clean my little thing up here. And this way you don't end up with spaghetti for hair. You let the you let the shades and the shadows and all that thing works. And then of course you're going to work on your strays. You'll you'll take for example, uh, you can you can take your wedge uh, eraser whatever, and you can draw out like like so. My Tombow would be better, but let's see if I can get this in here. Okay, so you see like I got this little line here and then out here it would be the stray hair. I don't have a point on this thing, but you get your strays in there. You know, just to add to your realism, I got a little hard here. Just adjust that. Okay, so that's hair, and you want to do that, give it that nice soft look. Instead of drawing a lot of lines, you want to get, get it to where you're just blending and you're pulling out highlights where the light's going to be to improve on this harsh, very harsh uh, line drawing here. And you want to get your, you want to get your uh, tones correct. The back here is dark. You want this dark. It gets lighter as you get towards the light area, which is here. And then it should go dark again here and dark again here and so forth. Okay. I apologize for scribbling all over the drawing, but I'm just trying to get the point. And uh, if you like this video, please give me a like. Uh, definitely uh, helps me uh, to put out more of these videos. Uh, subscribe and click the notification bell so that you'll be informed of upcoming videos. And thanks again for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.